Good morning, welcome back to the homestead. Today we are going to be doing the wiring for our Victron system, which is inside of our chicken coop slash solar shed. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, click on them at the top of the screen. But this solar shed in this Victron installation will power our entire barn and stable, obviously this little shed, and also our well pumps. But first we have to get all the wiring in, so let's get going. Before we take you inside to complete the wiring for the inverters and the charge controller, we need to finish this combiner box on the outside. So inside of our combiner box here, we've got our two PV lines coming in from our panels to the positive and negative on our DC breaker. From there, we've got the short jumper from this positive down to the red on our terminals on our dinkle din rail. From here, we are gonna go up to our SPD that SPD is grounded to this ground bar and then down and out to our grounding system. Now we also have this equipment grounding conductor from our panels into this bar as well and that goes out to the entire system also. So it's recommended that you put ferrules on the end of your wire, especially if it's thinner stranded like PV wire is. However, most ferrules that you find, the little shroud at the end is too big to go on this PV wire. This PV wire from Signature Solar is this one right here. It's almost twice as thick as this one that I got off of Amazon. So that certainly is not going on this wire. What I did was I just sliced down both sides of the little shroud so it would fit over the end of the wire. You can leave the wires bare if you choose or put the ferrule on. Let's get the rest of these jumpers made and then I'll show you something cool about this Dinkle Din Rail. We have almost everything completed. Our PV lines in to our breaker, down to our dinkle rail, and up to our SPD. But we need a way to bridge between these two lines. And that's what these little jumpers are for. That's why this din rail, this dinkle din rail is so cool. What we're gonna do is plug in these jumpers between, and that will bridge that so it can run up to our SPD. I'll show you what we've got coming into our breaker from our panels per our configuration. Perfect, it's 133.8 volts. And if I flip our breaker on here, we're gonna measure 133 across these two, I believe. Yep, 133.7. But if you go next to them, we're at zero. That's why we need those jumpers. We're gonna jump between them. Plug those in, and we should measure the same going this way. 133.7. Now the last thing to do is to connect our PV lines that will go into our MPPT down here on the bottom of the DIN rail. Now we're inside and before we connect our PV wires to our MPPT, we of course need to run it through our PV disconnect. With these IMO disconnects, they are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So what we are gonna bring in are only two lines. We're gonna go from two, over to one. So our red line or our positive line is gonna come into two and go out through one and then up to the positive on our MPPT. Our negative is gonna come in at eight. And then from seven, we're gonna continue the negative up to our negative on our MPPT. And with that, we've got all of our PV wiring connected. Now on to the rest of the DC side of things. Once again, forgive me for the air conditioning noise, but it still is 95 degrees outside. Okay, first connection we are going to make is from our MPPT to our Lynx distributor. And for our particular system with this MPPT 250-100, we need two gauge wire. So if you're not making your own cabling and you're buying your wire from the solar company, usually they come the same length, which is great, but they will come with lugs on the end, which is awesome, but for this particular application, for these MPPTs, I need to cut these off. That's where this wire stripper comes in very handy. This is the one that I used on the other system. It's made in Germany, and I'll list it down below. Basically push this up and hook it on to your wire, and then run it around. That will make a nice smooth cut, that you can just pull off your insulation off the end of it. Carefully insert it in there because two gauge wire is about the max that will fit 
into this 250 slash 100. The tug test is always good for these. Here's our Lynx distributor. This is going to connect to everything on the DC side of things, except for the PV, which goes into your MPPT. So all of the battery cable connections from your batteries, all of the cable connections from your MPPT and to your inverters will run through this. Let's take the cover off and show you what's inside. First thing we see are these two giant bus bars, the positive one on top and the negative one on the bottom. On this side of your distributor, there's this little gate here you can take out, and that's gonna give you the ability to daisy chain these together and to also put several other components that Victron makes in this position. You can put a smart shunt, there's another type of communication device you can put in here, but I just have this one. On the bottom, what we're gonna do is flip up these little gates here and that exposes underneath our negative bus bar where we will connect all of our negative cables. Now to do this nicely you're probably going to need to remove this little centerpiece here which just kind of pops out and you can just break that off. And that'll give you the ability to get maybe even one or two cables in here beside, uh, depending on their size, and then two on top on a single stud. Connect our terminal on here and then put the flat washer, the lock washer, and then the nut on top of it. We're gonna flip that down and we are gonna put our positive on the top. Before we connect everything back together, we're going to need one of our fuses to connect our positive to our negative. That's what bridges between the two bus bars. So these are our main battery cables. If we remove the end caps from these and utilize these holes to make these connections, that leaves a lot of exposure here to be able to bridge this gap, which isn't that far at all. There's not a lot of protection. So I'm gonna bring them back on this side and connect them at this point because when our cover goes back over the top, they will at least have some sort of protection. Once we've got everything buttoned up on the distributor below, we can run our cables up to our inverter. I just took those little pop-out grommets that come with the inverter and sliced off a portion of them so they fit over the cables. Now we're gonna insert them in the bottom and tighten them down to torque specs. It's very clear on these Victron Multi Plus 2 which side is which, this side has a red plastic um, divider and it's the positive and this side is the negative with a black plastic divider. It's nice, it keeps them apart and separated which is a nice safety feature. Okay, we're making progress. I've got a lot of the DC side wired and some of the communication wired. I will show you everything fully complete when I'm done with it. Here's our sub panel. We've got our line one and line two that go to the barn to that 60 amp breaker on our main panel. We've got our neutral and we have our ground. Since this is a sub panel, we're gonna keep the neutral and the ground apart from one another and not bonded together. They are bonded together in the barn. So our line one will come here to this terminal and our line two to this one up here. Then in from our inverters, we'll have a neutral from one here, a neutral from the other one there. And then from inverter one, the master, we'll have our red line one that goes to this side of the breaker. And from inverter number two or the slave, we'll have the black conductor coming up into this side of this breaker. All my AC wiring is going to be AC out. We have no AC in or grid assist into these inverters since this is going to be an off-grid system. It will be wired the exact same way as my EG4 system in the house. If you haven't seen those installation videos, click on the link at the top of the screen. For this version of the Multi Plus 2, you are going to need a very thin and narrow flathead screwdriver to insert up into this tiny hole right here. And what that does is it releases a spring inside that allows you to push 
your conductor up inside. You'll need to cut back the insulation on your conductors quite far, about an inch, so that they will fit all the way up inside of this connection block. On this particular model, we are labeled N for neutral, E for earth ground, and it's got the ground symbol, and then L for our line. And that's where a black conductor is here. Insert your screwdriver into that front hole, and then take your conductor and insert it up as far as you possibly can. Then take out your screwdriver, as you can see mine was stuck in there, and give it a tug to see if it's seated properly in there. It is. We just finished all the DC connections, all the AC connections, and all of the communication lines. Let me show you how everything is connected. Down here we have our EG4 Life Power 4 batteries. They are connected in parallel, so negative to negative, positive to positive, and those run over to our negative and positive bus bars. From the bus bars, we have these large battery cables that go to our Lynx distributor. From the Lynx, coming in, we have our conductors from our MPPT. And from the links out, we've got conductors running down this way, up to this inverter, and then down this way, and up to this inverter. And on our positive lines, we have our 125 amp Nader breakers. And then of course, we have our PV lines into our PV disconnect, and then up to our MPPT. This MPPT, is a metal housing and it needs to be grounded. So we have an electrical grounding conductor that goes back into our system here, is grounded on our ground bar, and that runs back to our main panel in our barn, which is just out the window about 55 feet that way. Over here, we have our neutral, our line, and our ground for this inverter. And then I ran out of white four gauge, so this has some white tape on it. This is our neutral for this inverter, our line, and our ground. And these are all connected to AC out number one. All of our neutrals land on our neutral bar here at the top. If you remember, we had to buy larger lugs for this four gauge wire. So we've got the neutral in from our one inverter and this was the black one that's marked with white here also in from the other inverter. And this is our main neutral going back out to the barn. We've got our two conductors coming in from our inverters. Black is on this side, red is on this side, which means this bottom bar is connected to red going back to our main service panel. And this black on this side is connected to the top, which is connected to this black going back to our main service panel. This is a sub panel, so nothing is bonded, which means there's no neutrals that touch the grounds here. That all happens back in our main panel. All these grounds are from our inverters, the one back to the barn, the one in from the MPPT. And then also the electrical grounding conductor in from our panels is connected here as well. Let me show you the communications connections before I start everything up. Let's first start from our batteries. This is the communication cable that runs back to the EG4 hub. And our communication between these two batteries runs from right side to left side. From here, we have an RS45 communication cable that comes up and connects into the bottom of our EG4 hub. And that is connected at one of the battery connection points. There are quite a few communication cables in this kind of rat nest here. This is the best that I could do for the time being until I figure out some other organizational method for this. But we showed you earlier our Serbo GX Touch. Then for communication, we've got our VE Direct cable plugged into the bottom of our MPPT that comes straight across and right into our Serbo GX in this port right here. And you can see right underneath it, it says VE1 Direct, and that's where we'll put it. For our Serbo Touch, it has an HDMI cable, and that comes right in to the only HDMI connector on the Serbo GX. That runs up, and it comes with these two magnetic uh, clamps that you need to put on that wire. So one goes on the HDMI cable at this point close to the servo. If we follow it up, we've got our touch GX. Now this is where the other clamp goes. The reason I have it hanging here is I wanted to show you this mount. This mount comes separately 
and I highly recommend getting it. Because if not, this is just going to sit or hang somewhere in your space. The kit does not come with this standoff piece where you can fit the cable through the back. So the nice thing about this is it'll fit beautifully on the wall. Since we have the EG4 Life Power batteries, we need this communication hub. You can see battery BMS can, and that plugs in right here to the battery BMS right here on the bottom. And then it comes in, you can see it says Victron VE can, and that'll plug in all the way on this side to the left side of the Serbo GX. Let's show you the inverters. We've got VE bus from this one, comes around to a VE bus connection on this, another VE bus connection coming down here, and that loops around into the VE bus connection on our Serbo GX here on the top. Let me mention also that you're going to need this MK3 interface, which has a USB on one side and it has a port for your VE bus on the other. And that is to program your inverters initially. So what you will do is you will not use your Serbo GX. You'll take that VE bus from your inverter out and plug it into your MK3 and into your computer so you can program them. That's everything connected. Now let's fire it up. First thing we're gonna do is turn on our breakers that run on our positive conductor up to our inverters. Next, we're gonna turn on the batteries. And since we have the EG4 Life Power 4 batteries, and similarly with the EG4 LL batteries, they have an internal pre-charge resistor. And that will keep that initial rush of energy regulated so that we don't damage our inverters. If you have different types of batteries, you need to use a pre-charge resistor when connecting your positive to your positive bus bar. Let's go ahead and turn these on. And we have activity on our MPPT. Now let's turn on these inverters. That wraps it up for all the wiring. We will be tackling the programming with our computer in the next video, so make sure you stick around for that. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. Now go check out this playlist right here, which is our full solar playlist, including the installation videos for our GrowWatt system, our EG4 system, and all the new videos for the Victron system. Have a beautiful blessed day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.